The discovery of the Central Asian marker had changed our understanding of the journey made by the first Europeans. But was Europe the only destination for these formidable Central Asian hunters? Did their journey take them anywhere else? We widened our search and were in for an even bigger surprise. The markers seemed to be everywhere we looked, from Europe, through Asia, Russia, North and South America, the list seemed to be endless. We'd uncovered an astounding secret. If Africa was the cradle of mankind, then Central Asia was its nursery. A bazaar sea of faces and you can tell so much from a face or can you where are we now we could be anywhere across the continent of eurasia but in fact we're right at the very heart of it in central asia china is a few miles in that direction afghanistan a few hundred miles to the south this is really the crossing point the central part of the continent of eurasia and I've come back for a very special reason. Hidden in the samples of those 2,000 Central Asians was one extraordinary individual. His name is Niazov, and he's directly descended from the man whose DNA, 40,000 years ago, had a tiny spelling mistake, the Central Asian marker. This genetic marker has spread throughout the Northern Hemisphere and been inherited by over a billion people. Branches of Niazov's ancestors went on to people Europe, parts of India, Russia, and America. But Niazov's family has always stayed here. Analyzing his DNA for the first time was an extraordinary moment. In an instant, I knew we'd discovered something very important. Now we're going to meet him. After nearly 2,000 generations, Niazov still lives in Central Asia. I'm excited about meeting him again, now that I fully understand the history he holds in his blood. I'm on the track of one man whose blood tells the story of the most extraordinary journey in history. The children of this man's great ancestor became Native Americans, Europeans, Asians, and Russians. Some even made it down into India. We left eastern Kyrgyzstan at about 9 o'clock this morning, and it's 9 o'clock at night now, but very, very excited. Um, we're about to go in and meet somebody who plays a critical role in our understanding of the genetic history of Eurasia. Um, he, he gives us a direct line back to the ancestors of most Europeans, Native Americans, and a lot of Indians. So um, let's go see him. <laughs> This is an extraordinary moment. You can make discoveries in a lab, but to put a face to a genetic marker as ancient as this, well, for me, it's truly amazing. He may be shorter than I am, but he's a genetic giant in our history. I'm going to have to give him my blood speech, though. Hope it doesn't put him off. What if I told you that your blood takes us back in history 40,000 years? Your lineage takes us back to the very first Central Asians, before Uyghurs, before Pamiris, before Tajiks, the very first people who lived here. Do, do you know what DNA is? DNK. So it's the blueprint. That, that it's your instruction book. It's how to make so a, another DNA version of your children. Now, the thing that we've been studying is known as the Y chromosome. And this is a small piece of DNA that doesn't really do very much except to make you male. So your Y chromosome you got from your father. So you clean. Clean. Pure. This is a picture of his father. What is it? Ah, it's my dad. And a grandfather. Yeah, that's great. Father and grandfather. That's fantastic. So that is a lineage, okay? Your Y chromosome came from him to him to you. Now, if, if we trace back even further, so we go from you 
to your father, to your grandfather, to his father, and for so on and so on and so on, back through nearly 2,000 generations. If we do that, we reach a single man, a single man, one man. То есть, когда мы это делаем, то есть вы, допустим, один человек берем как человек. Who was living in southern Central Asia? Который живет в центре Средней Азии, то есть Евразии, Евразии, в центре континента. Мы живем, да? Да. Средней Азии. Сердце. Сердце. Around forty thousand years ago. Now this was a very important man because <laughs> because he is the he is the ancestor of Europeans, uh -huh. Native Americans, and many many Indians. <laughs> so I can I can tell you with absolute certainty. Я могу вам точно вот сказать, точно с полной уверенностью. Your Y chromosome and his Y chromosome uh -huh. and his Y chromosome, they've been here for forty thousand years. Спасибо. Thank you. Мой кровь из нас чистый. That means my blood is pure. So congratulations. Поздравляю. Very interesting blood. Я вам благодарен, что вы издалека пришли. I'm very thankful that you came from the far. Большое спасибо. Thank you very much. Well, thank you for meeting us. Я так боялся, что они меня делают. Turned out the poor guy thought a doctor was coming to tell him he had cancer. No wonder he looks relieved. Genetically, we're so close. Yet from here in Central Asia, the descendants of Niazov's ancestral grandfather ventured out to give us an incredible diversity of looks. One group traveled west along the plains of Asia to become the first Europeans. But one branch of Niazov's family reached the Americas. Their children are the Native Americans, from the Inuit to the Incas. To get there, they had to embark on a journey into climatic extremes beyond anything endured before. Remember the Ice Age? Well, 20,000 years ago, it was at its most extreme. And yet, our research shows that that's when they headed straight into its bitter heart. Some of them are still there. Niazov's ancient marker shows up in a nomadic tribe deep in the Russian Arctic. They're called the Chukchi, and they're survivors from the Great Migration to the Americas 15,000 years ago. They look so pleased to see us. Or maybe it's just curiosity. I can't imagine they get many visitors. Uh-oh. I can feel another frozen handshake coming on. Time to show off a bit of my high school Russian. Меня зовут Спенсер. Виктор. They spend their lives in temperatures that are now paralyzing me. Looking around here, I'm struggling to comprehend it all. Somehow, they're better able to cope with the cold. And Nina Jablonski knows why. The Chukchis are a classic example of what has been referred to in human biology as Bergman's and Allen's rules. That is, in a very cold climate, the surface area of the body will be reduced and the length of the appendages will be reduced. So the people tend to have shorter arms and legs, shorter fingers, and a shorter and rounder trunk to reduce the surface area through which heat can be lost. In that way, they're wonderful furnaces, as it were, for preserving their own body heat. The Chukchi's ancestors had followed the reindeer eastwards. After thousands of years, they ended up here at the eastern tip of Russia. But they couldn't go any further and were forced to make this inhospitable corner of the world their home. The ebb and flow of Chukchi life is determined entirely by the reindeer that they herd. The things they eat, the clothes they wear, even the dwellings they live in, they all come from the reindeer. And this time of year, life is getting pretty difficult, so the herd needs to move on so that it can scrape subsistence out of the snow-covered ground here. 
What we're seeing right now is the village packing up to move on after the herd. Herding the reindeer together and pulling a few of them off so that they can drag the sledges with the tents. A journey which began with Niazov's family in Central Asia, then moved east along the length of Russia, left the ancestors of these incredibly tough Chukchi poised to conquer a new continent. But there was a seemingly impassable barrier to their route. The frozen reaches of the Bering Sea separate Russia from the Americas. We're here at the Bering Strait, and it is unbelievably cold here. Clogged with ice for about six months of the year, not even an icebreaker can get through. And yet we know that the ancestors of the Native Americans made it through here about 15,000 years ago at the height of the last ice age. How could they have made a trip like that? As temperatures fell and sea levels dropped, a new landmass called Beringia was exposed from beneath the Bering Sea. This new land connected the Russian Far East to Alaska. The reindeer headed for new pastures. The few survivors followed them, taking mankind into uncharted territory, into the new world. The first Americans arrived here only about 13,000 years ago. And they probably walked from Alaska down a, a corridor that existed certainly by 11,000 years ago uh, along the eastern side of the Rocky Mountains. There may have still been ice to the east and the west, but there was an ice-free corridor that they could have walked down when they arrived in North America. It was essentially an empty environment from their perspective with lots of rich resources. After 10,000 years of struggling through the tundra, these Arctic hunters hit the jackpot. As the ice gave way to the rolling prairies, they found a new land in which to live and prosper. Their numbers swelled, and in only 800 years, they had peopled both North and South America. I'm off to meet an ancient tribe who traced their family line back to Siberia, to the ancestors of the Chukchi, who made that first migration into the Americas. They're the Navajo, and they live here in Canyon de Che, Arizona. The Navajo Indians have been living in North America ever since their Chukchi ancestors first arrived. Canyon de Che is one of their most sacred sites. I wanted to tell them about the genetic trail that had led me to them. I'm getting pretty good at this. Of course, it helps that I brought the family album along. And this man is a direct descendant of a person who lived in Central Asia about 35 to 40,000 years ago. Wow. And his ancestor is also the ancestor of most Europeans and Native Americans. Wow. He's a man called Niazov, who lives in Kazakhstan. Are you the same person that uh, did some research I noticed on the internet that says that the Native American people are somehow connected to yes. Central Europe? Yes, Central Asia. Central Asia. Yeah, that, that was wow. a paper that we published last year. Okay. That's good to know. What do you think of that? I, uh, I, I, you know, there's, and I was looking at a book from people from Central Asia, and I saw my cousin Emmett and Abraham, yeah. Auntie, Auntie <laughs> Grandma Buggy, and I said, my God, I got family over there in Central Asia. These are the Chukchi people, and they're your they're distant cousins. Siberia. They're still living in northeastern Siberia. I visited them recently. Oh, they're the ones that have With the reindeer. With the reindeer. Reindeer. Yeah. Uh -huh. I've seen them on TV. Their home is... They're, they're yeah, their little. home looks like a teepee. My story about the journey of man came as no surprise to these Navajo. The idea of migration had been central to their own creation story since the beginning of time. The point is that somehow we're finally saying, acknowledging one another from the scientific realm and from the traditional realm, saying that, yeah, the puzzle is starting to fit together. Mm -hmm. And we complement each and other. And we're all complementing each other. 